Hello and welcome back to my craft room. It's a beautiful spring day here in my part of the UK. Perfect day to be in my craft room doing the little project I've got planned for this afternoon. So this is going to be all about felting, specifically 2D felting this time. So first of all, let me take you to my desk and show you what I've got to play with. So I'm going to be using the supplies from this month's, no, last month's, the February Maker's Flock box. So the Maker's, I'm come back I'll come back up again now because I've got to talk to you <laughs> so the makers are specialists in all things felting you've probably heard me rave on about how much I love the makers before Steffi the founder is just such a lovely lady I love how they're so eco-friendly I love how she's inspired by nature all of the designs are Steffi's own designs and everything that she sells in the shop is something that she loves to use herself um i just think they're i just love everything about this company and i'm very very happy to recommend them steffi very kindly gave me a year's worth of subscription to the makers flock membership so i'll show you quickly what you get in the box i have already done an unboxing though earlier in the month i had thought what i might do is wait for the march box to arrive quickly show you the contents of that and then spend the rest of the afternoon playing with my february box but I've decided I've got an afternoon to myself. Um, I'm just in the mood to do the little project I've got in mind for today. So I'm going to crack on and do it anyway. And then I'll come back again and show you when the when the March box arrives. Might as well, while I'm here, let me just show you a quick look. Here is the Makers website. I will put a link to this below, of course. Um, so this is the subscriptions page. And you can see here, this is what you get in this month's makers box subscription so that's the main makers box it's 26 pounds but if you you can subscribe for three six and nine and twelve months i think it is and it gets cheaper um with subscription they do post all over the world but obviously that will cost more um all the all the information is is on the website so i'll just link to that the makers flock membership is what i'm talking about i'm going to show you in a minute that you can see you can get from 7.90 a month so let me show you let's go into this so here it is and so i already know um steffi doesn't believe in surprises so you already know what you're gonna get <laughs> i'm sure we heard her say once well, she actually just doesn't like surprises herself so so i already know what's coming in the february box and it looks like so much fun it's, it's those little it's little donuts will it let me open that up there we go so it's these little felted donuts on key rings <laughs> brilliant <laughs> love that can't wait to get that can't wait to have a go and that looks like a little look at what you're gonna get in there yes there we go very exciting can't wait for that to arrive we'll have a, another quick refresh at what was in the february box and that's what i'm going to play with today now this is all about 2d felting which is fantastic because i've been really getting into doing some 2d felting the last thing i did what i showed last time i did a felting video was this little postcard i actually haven't finished the back still so i'm making these for the prompts that tori of cool kooky creatures she's doing a postcard stitch along and um, the prompt for last month was zodiac mind warp <laughs> so this was my prompt for last month and the one for the month before was uh, i think it was it cozy it up and that's what I, I, this is what i want to do on the back of each one i haven't got around to doing this one yet it's been a very busy month weirdly unexpectedly um so i'm just going to do something similar for, for each month and i'm really enjoying this 2d shouting i've done a little bit before but i really wanted to explore it more so perfect timing that that was what was in the um that was the, the the kind of subject of the makers flock box last month so with the flock box what you get is some tasters and samples really but it's always enough to make a little project with i find i think it's really generous and you also get as well as what's in there you also get various other perks of membership there's a, a, a private facebook group you get tutorials that nobody else can get i think they do eventually go up onto their youtube channel um but they're 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 an added benefit of um makers flock membership and the flock gatherings the uh once a month they have a flock gathering you all kind of get together online have a bit of a have a bit of a live chat and um work along with Steffi using the contents of the flock box. I thought this was a fantastic little box. Steffi then takes you through what all of the materials are for and the supplies. So sometimes you'll get little tools or um, yeah, all sorts of different things so far I've had. Now, because this is all about 2D felting, 
she gave us some different kind of substrates to, to try. I don't know if you called it substrates with, with wool felting in art. It would be a substrate, wouldn't it? So just a, a surface to work on. So this is pre-felt, which I've never used before. It's kind of a... So, that, so that, that's a, that, this is a normal felt. Let's bring you down a little bit. This is a normal a, a kind of acrylic wool felt, acrylic wool mix. And this is like, it's just, it's kind of only partially felted, isn't it? It's not completely felted. So that would be interesting to try that. I've tried felting onto this before. So that's what I've been doing my postcards on. So it'd be interesting to try this. I'll try this today. And then this is like an even weave kind of fabric with this tomte. I think they call it tomte. Um, a, a gnome, we would call it a gnome. Steffi's, Steffi's German, so she calls it a tomte. <laughs> And um, you can felt the whole thing or you can just colour some of it or stitch into some of it. Do what you like with it. Or as she said, if you don't like these, turn it over and do something else on the other side. So I'm really looking forward to doing that. And I think I can make them into cute little cards, fray out the edges and make them into little card toppers. I think it'd be lovely. Um, and then Hessian, which is something, again, I have tried felting into before. So I might try a little 2D scene on that as well. I've also bought from them before a Lucky Dip Pack, which was brilliant. And one of the many things in the Lucky Dip Pack was this. So, and again, another, another kind of 2D felting experience to try. I've never tried 2D felting into something like this, but I'm dying to have a go at it. Absolutely lovely. And what I really would like to do is to felt into it and then stitch into it and add some beading and sequins as well to make it really, really spectacular. So there's that. So this, yeah, this is going to be a real 2D felting month for me. There's lots of things I want to try. And I got from them some of this stuff which Steffi recommends for things like if you want to make kind of 2D, well, 2D, but 3D flowers. Um, so you felt them onto this water soluble paper and you can just leave it there. You don't have to, you can kind of, you know, rinse them in water to get rid of the paper, but you can just leave it there. It doesn't really, doesn't really matter, but it gives you a good basis to work on to create the petals of flowers. And with the first box, you get some free gifts with the first box, including this this um, sketch pad, which actually I've decided I'm going to use for something else because I just don't think I'm going to use it much with kind of felting things. So I'm not going to keep it in my felting box anymore, but it's a lovely, um, a lovely little. I'm going to use it in, in a, in a, as a doodle journal. <laughs> More about that on a different video. But in amongst the gifts that I got with the first Maker's Flock box was this set of templates for making different flowers. So I thought for my projects I'm going to do this afternoon, I'm going to try some of these primroses on the water soluble paper. Because in a way, um, still fits with the 2D thing because you're going to create these as 2D pieces, but then you're going to shape them to make them more like three dimensional flowers. I will link to the Maker's YouTube channel as well because they've got lots of really good tutorials on there that anyone can access. And amongst those tutorials is how to make flowers, wreaths and things using these kind of templates. So I will be referring back to that. I'm not gonna be showing this whole project because I'll probably be quite a while, but although I have found, I must say, making these kind of postcards like these has been surprisingly quick. The main felting part has only taken me like an hour for both of these what's taken more time is the stitching that i've done you know kind of you know the stitching on the back or or this kind of part has taken me much longer than the felting the felting itself is quicker and easier than you, than you might think if you've not tried it before so yeah i'm going to try a bit of that i've also got thinking about 2d felting these which i've had for years literally for years i got them really cheap in some kind of a sale and I can't even remember where now I, th I have it in my head that I paid a quid each for them but they're like a wool felt they're all recycled no maybe not wool felt from post consumer recycled fibers love that idea so what I'm thinking is once I've done a few more practice 2d scenes it would be quite nice to felt them onto onto these these are meant as bags to put your tablet or whatever in but i think they'd also make lovely kind of pockets kind of pouches for art journals or whatever wouldn't they make lovely lovely gifts i think so yeah i've hung on to these for years and i think now is my time to use them that's waiting in the wings let's have a quick look at what else was in the box so we got all of these and this was called dragon mix and let me just check was it dragon mix so wool viscose felt, hessian, white pre-felt, 
dragon mix wool bats so bats are when the fibers are all in all different directions like this so it felts felts together more, more quickly tops is when you get them like this where they're all lying smoothly in one direction or roving sometimes that's called roving and this was the other thing that we got in the box um now what is it called oh they've not mentioned it here oh because these are the try me products and then you also get a sheep swatch each time that's difficult to say sheep swatch each time here we go your sheep swatch sample <laughs> sunset wool tops these space dyed Australian merino tops, beautifully soft and brightly coloured with a mix of deep oranges, hot reds and vibrant yellows. Perfect for creating 2D pictures with a stunning sunset scene. Of course, that would involve me having to ruin my sheep's watch. <laughs> I love the idea of collecting a little flock of sheep. <laughs> but of course, each of these little sheep so these are the two previous boxes that i've had each of these would also make um would also be a useful little addition to a project wouldn't they and um for 2d felting a little bit goes a long way so i've also got my little bag of well not really scraps but sort of smaller pieces here waiting in the wings so even quite little diddy little pieces like that i mean that is something that i felted and ended up not using but I, it would be an interesting texture incorporated into a landscape scene. So I've kept anything like that in this bag. Tiny little, tiny little wisps of things in there can all be used. My idea for this afternoon, I want to try these. I want to see what this feels like. I want to try one of the, one of the flowers as well. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the hessian. I will end up just creating a, a a background on it maybe that would be a good one to try the sunset on but i don't think i'm gonna be able to do it all this afternoon oh and one of the other one of the perks you get and i mentioned it already with the membership is that you get 20 percent off a different kind of range of projects each of products each month so for last month it was all about the surfaces so um landscape picture kits and the kits are brilliant you get all the needles and everything in it you know and when you get your if you subscribe to the main makers box you, in your first kit kit you get one of their compostable felting mats full-size felting mat and a set of needles or various other bits and pieces in your first in your first box yeah so the discount the 20 percent off discount this month is on the landscape picture kits felt sheets pre-felt and the landscape wall mix the prompt for Tori's postcard for March is oh my ears and whiskers and I think a lot of people have been doing uh, hares and rabbits because of course it fits with the feeling of spring in the air at the moment here in the UK as well so I'm thinking I and I, I really want although perhaps this isn't the first colour you might think of for a rabbit I'm not going to be going for realism I'm not sure if it's going to be a hare or a rabbit. <laughs> this isn't quite postcard size, but what I'm thinking is create my rabbit separately and do a separate stitched background. So I might use this. I'm, 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 I've tried this before. I've tried this before. The thing I'm most itching to try is I want, I want to try these. And I want to try this pre-felt to see what it feels like. So I think I'm going to gonna create my my bunny or hare or whatever she turns out to be i'm picturing her with a little easter bonnet on <laughs> and i don't even know if she'll be outside she might be indoors and she's going to have a little hat on and i think i'm just going to use this because i want to see what this comes out like um, i love all the different colors in it and i don't see why my rabbit can't be these colors so i'm just getting a little box of tricks out this is my now well used compostable felting mat I think I've, I've seen some people use something like I don't know if it's baking paper I don't know what they're using in between to stop the to stop this happening some other little bits we've had in previous that's a bit of silk clay that you can use to make the little feet and things with so I've kept that lanolin this is the maker's flock badge that you get with the first with your first box one of the things you get in your first box and um if you take this with you and they're at, and you go to a show where the makers have a have a stand you get a discount with that so that's good so i've got this as well this is the makers edging tool um and it's really handy if you're doing flat kind of 2d 
pieces because you can put them whoops say you were felting this into a flat shape and you wanted to tidy up the edge you can put them between these two pieces so you can see what you're doing I mean you could do this with a couple of pieces of card or something but then you can't really see what you're doing and then you can put your needle down between and you can neaten up the edge it's a really handy thing so when I come to do the ears and things I'm going to be using these so I will need that this time I'm going to make myself a little felting needle book I've made a lot of needle books before but I need a felting needle book it needs a little bit more thought so yeah I should be back to do that very soon as well I'm thinking about it's ideal to use this because look I've got some hairs on it I can't remember the name of the company it's a local company that I bought this from these are the needles we got in a previous Maker's Flock box. The one that fascinated me was the reverse one um, because it actually, um, instead of kind of matting the wool in as you stab it, it pulls the wool out from the inside so you can get interesting fur effects. I leave those out and all of those. I'll put this out the way. Yeah, so last time I, I kind of created a background first and then worked my my ladies on top of it this is going to be a completely different thing and I've not tried doing this before so that's about the size I want for her little face allowing for the fact that it's going to come in a bit as I felt it let's put her there and leave room for a little bit of a dress to show <laughs> she's not going to be a normal bunny this one I'm just gonna um, show you kind of little snippets and I've forgotten which I feel like I want a coarse needle and that isn't one. What I need to do is work out what all the different needles are, label them, make my little needle case and try and keep them in. That's better. That's the one I want. Starting with a coarser needle just to get everything kind of roughly shaped out. I have to keep lifting up here or it felts itself to the mat. One of the things I love about felting is you can just keep adding, if it's got too big, just felt it down a bit more. You can take bits away, cut bits off, put a bit more over the top, smooth it over, blend more colour over it. <laughs> you know, if, the, if you pick the wrong colour, you can just add another layer or tone it down with another layer. It feels a bit daunting when you when you first start but once you jump in it just feels very kind of intuitive quite quickly I think. Okay believe it or not that's the rough shape of my rabbit's head I've got to make the ears now and I think I want to make the ears separately. So what I'm kind of thinking is to make them separately maybe even cut this. Okay so I'm gonna cut round this now and then I'm going to cut out two rough ear shapes and I'm going to felt the pieces separately and then put them together. So I'm just kind of using this as a way to, yeah, <laughs> totally making this up as you go, as I go along, can you, can you tell? But I've just cut round this now and I've cut out two ear shapes. They'll probably get a little bit bigger as I add the, the, the fibre, the wool to them. So my ears all kind of go there. I've got some photo references of hairs faces up in front of me to give me some idea but I'm not going for photo realism so you know. So what I want to do now is just um, so it doesn't look too much like a human face I want to build up some bulk here to make kind of the would you call it a muzzle and where the nose will go and then they have those very distinctive eyes which kind of uh, well sort of a bit to the side aren't they so I will start to make dents then where the eyes will go so I'm just going to show you some clips of this not because otherwise it's just going to get stupid stupid long I love I've got bits of purple in it and everything I really like that I'm going to mix this muzzle bit to make it a little bit lighter than the rest. I'm just going to try mixing it in with a little bit of this one so I've got some I think this was from the cat craft along this one and I'm just going to mix them by pulling them apart and putting them back together like that trying to just trying to split them without making the fibers too much shorter really 
and then when I've got my shape and everything I might end up wanting to put some tops over the top <laughs> to give a sort of a smoother finish over the top I don't know I'll see how I feel when I get to that point as I say I'm not going for a realistic effect so one of the things I love about doing this is that it just feels very sort of instinctive and and kind of organic <laughs> it's quite easy just to just to let them grow by themselves and go where they want to go really now looking at the photos the the shape of the head gets kind of narrower towards the top and out bigger at the bottom where the cheeks are You've got to be careful when you're using these needles not to kind of bend them and twist them or you'll, you'll end up breaking them Try and keep them going in straight, even when you're going at funny angles like this. Keep the needle straight. As I say, one of the lovely things is that you can just keep adding to it until the shape's right, really. I think I'm going to bring the neck in a bit. Okay, so now I'm going to build the muzzle up there a bit. Just sort of roughly shaping it roughly a kind of a <laughs> it's almost a rectangle but it goes in a bit there and then comes out again so keep checking it from different angles make sure it's kind of symmetrical and kind of makes sense <laughs> so I probably will get a, um, some pictures of the hair in profile as well so I'm not I'm not going for realism but you kind of need to know you need to have an idea of what the original animal looks like even if you're going to do a caricature version of it because the top of the head looks narrower and then the eyes kind of sit in the side there so this bit is kind of as wide as that bit but it dips in here and here so I'm going to work on that a bit more now then come back and show you when it's starting to look a bit more interesting the ears I'll probably felt separately and then leave some wispy bits on the bottom to attach them there and there. Okay, done a little bit more shape in there. I've I've sort of filled in at the back here. Now I know someone said last time this isn't really what they would see as 2D, but to me this this is 2D because although yes, it is quite dimensional from the side, you can see it's got dimension, but it's not like making a whole 3D creature like a, a freestanding 3D creature. It's basically, it's flat backed, it's on a flat surface. I haven't got to worry about armature. I haven't got to make it stand up or anything. So it's, in that sense, it's, it's, it's 2D. Let its little fat cheeks come out here. I've started to shape this in, in here just with my fingers really to sort of think that's where I'm going to see its eyes going. Then I decided I want a bit more Oh, which bit did I decide? I think it was this bit over there, kind of where his forehead, her forehead is going to be. A bit more bulk there. Bear in mind this isn't an expert tutorial by a long way. I've only just started doing this. I'm just <laughs> I'm just sharing what my kind of thought process is. Um, I had a bit too much out this side of the white stuff so I just trimmed it with a pair of scissors. Oh, that's fine. In real life, if you were looking from the side, the, the hair's muzzle comes out much more, but this is where I'm departing from reality. <laughs> I keep holding the ears up as well, just to, just to imagine where they're going to sit. I think it's one of the things that makes it look more like hairs than rabbits, it's how their ears it's, uh, go, and the lengths of their ears. And then this little wispy bit left over, I think, again from the cat craft along. Just thinking I'm going to make a kind of little nose area. Because once the nose is there, that will help me sort of place the rest of the face, I think. So in the photos I'm looking at, the eyes are really on the side there. They're looking forward at you, kind of, but they're very much placed on the side. And their nose looks quite low down here, so... Again, if I decide I'm not happy with the colour or whatever, I can just add to later on. Just wanted to give myself a sense of of kind of where the nose is going to be, really. And then the eyes will be 
higher up than you think and right on the side. Start poking a little hole roughly where the eyes are going to be. I thought hares had those funny eyes with the kind of slitty pupils. The pictures I'm looking at, they don't, so I must have been imagining that. You know, like goats have, don't they? Those strange eyes. Kind of indenting a line around where the, where the muzzle is to separate that from the cheeks. And if you go in, you need to do it a bit slowly, really. Just go in along the same line, back and forth a few times. You can create quite a definite demarcation. So I'm going to go around and do that, and then I'll be back. Yeah, I need to have it. I need to look up towards me like that so I can see what I'm doing. So I've sort of worked my way around, just creating a line, a bit of definition between the, the muzzle and the and, and the rest of the face. Just go, I've had a look at my photo again and I just feel like I want the top of this head to be a bit flatter because from the side they will tend to be more like this with the eyes here. There we go, and they've got quite large kind of bulbous eyes, so I'm just creating quite a big quite a big dip for that eye to sit in whichever way I want to do it. I can always make more of a dip later, but and then I'm just gonna add a little bit to the cheeks here and here so to make sure oh, get that little bit of straw out you do get little bits of straw and stuff in the wall sometimes it doesn't matter just pick it out so to try and get them both the same size I'm just going to take one piece and split it in half as well as I can and the idea being that if I start off with the same size piece I should end up with the same size cheeks And what I'm going to do now is just add some little wisps of wool around here just to cover this bit, add a bit more to the bulk of the cheek on that, on there. Um, and I'm going to cover the ears in the same way with a little bit of pink on the inside maybe, maybe. And then when I come to attach the ears, that'll be the next kind of different thing <laughs> to show you. And then I'll, I'll add eyeballs and the little indication of a mouth and some little clothes and a bonnet and flowers so yeah there's quite, quite a lot to do so um, I'm gonna come back when I get to the next interesting bit. Okay so I've, I've uh, covered both sides of the ears with a sort of a blend of pink and the grey and fawny colour. I'll add a bit more into it later probably. I use my multi-needle tool to get it felting you know nice and quickly. Um, and then I've taken more of the dragon mix and just taken wisps of it and laid it out to kind of cover the shape of the ear. I'm just going to felt that down and then as I come to the edges I'll just kind of turn it over a little bit like that so that the colour of the kind of back of the ear, the outside of the ear comes sort of rolls over onto the inside a little bit which kind of looks sort of semi lifelike <laughs> and then what I'm going to do is leave the kind of wispy ends here unfelted because that's where I will join it into the head so it needs to be wispy to make me to make me a nice join and it will be and once I've got the ears on it will be time to put the eyes and do the little features and I think I might use this leftover blue to make her a little blue kind of dress I think blue would be a nice contrast with her okay I'll do that and then I'll be I'll be back I've got my ears ready I've made them they've come out a bit too uh, narrow really but I'm gonna I'm gonna make them work I, I think it'll be fine looking at my photo references they don't go initially I was going to put them like this and that's not that's not right they actually kind of face more outwards I sit kind of like this so what I'm going to do is I've left this bit all kind of wispy and that's the bit I will felt into the into the base so I should get a nice sort of strong not too obvious join so I'm gonna do it kind of like that and then spread this out the wispy bit out and felt it into the face around and try and keep it so that this is folded that way so it's a little bit awkward 
I think what I will do is just um, wind my fingers, just sort of tack it a little bit first. I can always uh, move it if I haven't uh, tacked it in too hard. They're a little bit longer than they need to be, but that's okay because that gives me a bit of scope to to attach them. Let's have this one. I love that with this dragon mix I've got bits of pink and purple and all sorts going on in here. I really like that. And they're quite also, look at the photo references, they're quite close together at the top of the head too. As I said before, I can always put a little layer of another colour over the top if I need to, if I feel. So that looks like I've attached the ears way too far down, but what I'm going to do is try and felt it in all the way up here and find my eye holes again. And if need be, put a bit of like a top coat of, of the um, tops or roving here to smooth it all in together. Yeah, so my original eye was sort of there. Let's get that back. Yeah, I can always use a bit more of this to kind of shape the head around now. The other thing I was going to just try is that fancy needle, the reverse needle, which I believe is this one. Because I've kind of lost, because I was did a bit more shaping with this, I'd run out of the pink wool and ended up using this, which is fine, just to sort of uh, blend this all in together. But I want to bring some more of the pink back, so if I stab with this needle, it won't stab the wool in, it will bring inner layers of wool out. So I'm thinking I can bring back, yeah, so you can hear it going, stab in, can't hear anything, pull out, listen. <laughs> so it pulls the wall up instead of stabbing it in. So I'm wondering if I can bring back some of that pink that I lost. Yes, it's working. I don't know how well it will show on camera, but in real life, that's working really well. It's just bringing back that little pink blush to the inside of the ears. I'll maybe do a bit more of that once I've finished shaping the head and I know exactly where the ear is going to start because it might be a little bit further up, kind of here. So I want to end up with the ears like, kind of like that. So I'm going to have to put a bit more of this over the top. And then, and around there, and refine the eye hole. I think I'll put the other ear on now the same. And keep them symmetrical as I go along. Alright, so I've... I've got the ears on now. It's looking a bit more like a deer than a hare at the moment, but I'm hoping it'll come back. <laughs> as long as it's got ears and whiskers, it's fine. <laughs> I've got to dig out the whiskers. I've got some of the horsehair whiskers as well that came from in a, a maker's box, so I must dig them out in a minute. So I've got some of this um, lovely kind of smooth tops. I can't find any tops in a better colour than this that I've got unless I go into the really leery colours which I might end up doing but I just wanted to use some of these to just smooth over the joins kind of thing and uh, perhaps sort of highlight the the muzzle part so I'll just spread them out over the ears like this to sort of blend it all in nicely if that makes me sound like I know what I'm doing it's an illusion <laughs> As I am totally making this up as I go along. <laughs> but I hope what I'm showing is that anybody with like hardly any experience at all, you can have a go at this and enjoy it. It's really not difficult. And quite quickly you can get something that uh, is quite satisfying. I'm just using the needle just very carefully because I don't want to break it. Just to sort of brush this out a bit and to help me to help me blend it in nicely. Okay. And I would do a bit more work on this um, off camera as well to get that all lovely and blended. Let's just refine where the eyes were. Which is kind of there. I do have these big, quite sort of bulgy eyes, which I believe are yellow. Let me just check. And then I'll have to see what I've got available. Now I'm going to divide it into two, get it as even as I can sort of form this into a ball to start with start felting it only really needs to be a ball sort of on the 
on the outside surface. If the eyes end up looking a bit weird and wonky, I'm just going to call it a Mad March hair, so that's fine. <laughs> Let's keep turning it and turning it. Let's just, just try it for size. Yeah, I think by the time I've finished doing that and then filtered it into the eyeballs, I think I think that is going to be about the right size because they, they are really quite big, their eyes. And I need to check, do I need to make a little eyelid? Again, start with one piece and divide it in two to try and get both eyes the same. I'll make a pupil on there as well. That's going to be too big. I need half that size. And I could do it with a yellow bead and paint a pupil on. <laughs> so it is, it is becoming quite three-dimensional, I know, but it's still a flat. It's still on a flat surface. It's not a three-dimensional whole creature. So in that sense, it's two-dimensional. So I need to felt this quite firmly together, so I'm going to go into it quite a lot, and then I'll probably get a finer needle out as well. And go all over it and get it really nice and firm. And then once I've done that, I can slot it into the eye socket and I will probably just make more of an eye socket to sink it into before I start. I'll show you how I'm going to do the uh, the little mouth. So I'll just get a little tiny thin wisp like this, even thinner really. And then I'm just going to go and I'll look at my photos for reference. There's a line that goes from here up to here and then down from here. Actually just snip that off. Here, under here where I've where I've marked out the nose. So that's the centre point. We need to get a finer needle now. It's quite a definite line in the photos I can see so I'm trying to do that quite carefully, quite slowly. But I can always add a bit more black if I need to but it's actually quite a fine line. It's me saying I'm not going for realism, it sounds like I'm trying to be really realistic. I'm not, I just I want it to say hair. And then there's another bit that comes down and splits off to make the mouth. And you can get the tiniest little wisps as well and just add them to show the direction of the fur or add a bit of shading. So let's put that there like a sort of moustache to start with. Anchor it in the centre. Okay, so that's giving him the little, that little line, sort of top lip line. I'm saying him, so he started off as a she but I think he's going a bit he-ish now. I love his little personality that's coming out. I think it's one of the things I like best about doing this felting. It just, um, these little people and creatures and things just seem to create themselves. You know, I start off with a rough idea, obviously, but just let it do its own thing. And this has gone a bit wonky, but I like that. Don't mind the wonk. Embrace the wonk. When you find yourself chuckling to yourself at the little character that's emerging, you know you're having fun. I will need to dig out those horsehair whiskers. I'm just going to bring back a bit of this muzzle shape around here as well. I'm thinking where it was going to be a little uh, little collar of a dress and a bonnet. I'm thinking now it might be a bow tie. <laughs> but I still want to make a flower, so he might, he's, he'll probably have a flower. Instead of a bonnet, he'll have a flower in his ear or something. I think where the ears are attached, I want to just go in a bit more to imply an ear hole. They'd look quite fun put up on the wall like little miniature versions of those um, stag's heads. Only not real obviously. <laughs> if I did just the head. <laughs> or maybe, I think maybe he needs a skinnier neck like that, that might be more fun and I'll give him a bow tie. I think I'm going to do that, it just suddenly looks more fun. Okay, I've kind of got the eyes where I want them to be. Be. I still feel like maybe they should have been further out, but uh, that's where they've ended up. <laughs> Something not right about that. I've got to look at the photos again. Okay, this is this is maybe going to look a bit weird, but <laughs> so I'm going to take a piece like this. I'll just felt it a little bit, then I'll wrap it around the eye like that to create a little kind of housing for the eye. <laughs> And then that will get attached there. I'll put the, the sort of black area as well. I think it's going to look really quirky, but I think I'm going to love him. So I'm going to carry on now and finish this. I'm not going to come back again now until it's finished because this video is going to drag on way too long. I just wanted to show you kind of the, the way I'm going to be shaping that just in case there's a tiny outside chance that someone might want to uh, 
know how I did it. I just think that's going to give him a real personality. I thought about padding this out more here, building this out more, but it would just make it kind of more realistic. And I just liked this shape. I didn't want to lose this shape. I just like that about it. So yeah, he's gonna. As I've said all along, I'm not really going for realism. This is gonna. This is gonna work for me. <laughs> I'm gonna leave the video there. I will post pictures of my finished postcard in the Facebook group and the Discord community. I will put links in the description box below for that. And I will of course put links to um, the Maker's YouTube channel and their website so you can check them out for yourselves if you would like. Uh, as I say, this wasn't an expert <laughs> tutorial. <laughs> I haven't been doing this for very long at all, but it just goes to show what you can do. Just, you know, muddling along as a complete beginner. <laughs> Okay, it's the next morning. I was up until stupid o'clock last night finishing this, but I thought I'd just come back on this morning and um, tack this on to the end of the video. <laughs> he hasn't come out. Uh, I'm a, To be honest, I'm a bit kind of... He lost this little character in his face that I liked. And uh, yeah, um, in the end, I, called, I decided to call it a day and just went into the stitching. I mean, I'm happy enough with him. Um, it just, yeah, I, I liked his little... I liked his little expression at one point and I lost it. So, yeah, yeah. But it's, it's quite cute. And I really enjoyed stitching into it afterwards. You can see I've done quite a bit of stitching by looking at the back. I've just added a bit of texture of French knots there. I used some of this stuff, um, which was in the Magical Forest Pack. Enchanted Forest Pack, is it? Oh, yeah. Enchanted Forest Wall Mix. But other than that, I've the, I used all of pretty much all. This is the little last little pinch I've got left mixed with the mixed with that bit of beige. Pretty much all of that dragon mix that was in the um, the Maker's Flock box this month to make the most of the um, hair. But um, other than that, you just it's very tiny amounts you use with this two uh, D thing. That's it. So uh, I'm not going to show myself now because I'm still in my PJs. I haven't even brushed my hair yet. So. Uh, <laughs> Thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again really soon.